everyone, and welcome to the Peddling Prince's Podium. I'm your host, John Rodelli, and this is another in the Peddling Prince's Podium series on Cape Breton Island tourist attractions. Today we're at Jost House, and with me today is Marie Cerule, the manager of the property. In 1786, a gentleman by the name of Samuel Sparrow came here and set up shop. He, had, he was a merchant. So he had his store in front of the house and he had his servants and slaves working down here looking after his needs on the, on the second floor. Now he came in 1786 and he only stayed here for two years. After two years he left here and then after him there was a soldier. Now the soldier died and his widow lived in the house probably till the 1800s, 1832, around that time. In 1836 is when the Jost family came here and lived here till 1971. That's why it's called the Jost House. Then there was different people that lived in it, rented it, owned it, but a lady by the name of Mrs. Joan Harris, this is her baby. She bought it in around 1990 and she made it to the museum and what she did is she got it back in time and she made this she give this to the community, plain and simple, okay? Now, you'll notice all around, there's whitewash. Whitewash was used on everything. The chickens would white, wore whitewash because they had lice and mites. There was the chicken coops, the hot houses, the fences, everything was whitewash. Insects don't like salt. And the formula for whitewash is salt, lime, and water. So therefore everything was whitewashed to keep it clean and also keep the insects away. Okay? Now also we have the oven. The oven works the same way as a pizza oven or a barbecue, whatever you want to, you know, look at it. What happens is you make a roaring fire in there. Once your bricks are white, they're hot. Well they said, how did you check it? If you were the last slave or servant to come into the service, you'd be the one checking the temperature. You need to put your hand in there. If you had hair and skin left, you would go for it. You would bake all day, not a problem. Also, a feather. If the feather got cinched around the edges, it would mean the oven was too hot to bake. You had open vents and let some of the heat out. Also, when you wore shoes, you never wore a right shoe and a left shoe. Both shoes were the same. So when you went to bed, you crossed your feet. You took your shoes off. The next morning you'd have the opposite shoe on. You would wear them down evenly. That's how it was done. The pewter dishes, these were deadly. And the reason for that is lead. And we think of lead as being so far back. Even three years ago there was a problem with lead in the plastics. So this you still have to be very careful with it. You had a better chance if you were poor because poor people would use wooden bowls and certain trees have immunities to certain diseases. So therefore, if you had wooden bowls, you were safer. And then we come to the mailbox. If you sent a letter, you did not pay to send it. You would pay to get it. And I always say, imagine what you could do with junk mail. Send it all back, you know. Also, read between the lines. If you were to write to someone, you would write on the first page, first line, second line, third line, all the way down. When they would receive your letter, they would read it and then they would answer you back. But what they would do is they would write between the lines. And there was no envelopes, you just folded your pages and you put a seal. That's how it was done. And let's say you were away from home and you wanted your family to know that you were okay. You could write home. Now remember, there wasn't much money. So she couldn't accept the letter, but she would know that you were all right. It's just like the person the person calls that people make now. You know, the college students call home, Mom, you know, if it rings twice, I need $200. Mm -hmm. Well, it was a message, you know, without paying for it. And look at the barrels. Everything was put in barrels, like salt meat, salt fish. Mm -hmm. Dishes were put in straw. And a lot of times, stained, like the stained glass windows for the churches were actually put in barrels but they would put in molasses. Molasses was thick, and they would float in the molasses. But remember also that stained glass windows were put together, were put together with lead. So it was toxic. So 
So we come around here and we have the washing machine and this is dated 1888. This is not like what you have now. But you got to remember that people had no clothes to speak of. They had what they had on their backs and a change if they were lucky. So, like I said, when you buy an old house, you don't look for closets because they did not need them. And a lot of times people used to say they washed once a year whether they needed it or not. Their be belief was that if it had oil on your skin, it would protect them from diseases. And this machine, we figured, came from the Bedeck area because it's called a Fairchild washing machine and it's dated 1888. So this is probably from that area. We know that da the daughter of Alexander Graham Bell was married to a fair child. And these tools, we have different tools that you could still use now. The only thing different is this doesn't plug in, okay? You have to use it by hand. You have your, ja your striker and your flint, which would you light your fire with. You'd have a tinder box, and as soon as the cinder or the spark would hit it, you would blow till you were blue in the face to get it started, you know? The other one is a lighting jack. When you lit the wick on the lighting jack, you would light all the candles without making a mess. You know, because wax drips all over the place. And you have your ice cream scoop of the age. Ice cream was not like what we have now. It was a lot of water. So what it would do, it would stick to the edges so you had to turn the key to get the ice cream out. Also your potato masher, which is still being used today, it's the same concept. The only thing different is now we we um, we use the mix master or whatever you you know for the mashed potatoes, mm -hmm. and this is called a spigot. This is for the rum keg or the wine keg, and it's just like your everyday faucet. You turn it on and off. Now this is 1786, and this is where the slaves or servants would actually live and look after Samuel Sparrow on the second floor. Now when Mrs. Joan Harris got the building. She said, okay, we knew that the top part was dated 1910. So if we had that, taken that off, we don't know what we would have landed into. Damage a beam, done any damage. So what she did is she made it in what they call the evolution of a family dwelling. So as you go to each floor, the house gets younger in time. And that is what makes Jost House unique among heritage properties here in Cape Breton. Most heritage properties focus on the era in which they were built. Jost House takes you on a journey through time from the day the property was built all the way up to present day. Indeed, research continues to be done on the property's history to this day. That's why Jost House is a must-see for new visitors and returning visitors alike. It's just one of those places that, no matter how much you learn about it, there's always something new to discover. Well, thank you for watching the Pedley Prince's Podium this week. I'm your host, John Ardelli, and I hope to see you all again here next week. Bye for now.